The heat is really on. It's episode 12 today, and it's time to see whether Hensford can first get through the playoff semi-final, and then secondly, get promoted to the 6th division of Premier League football. It's not Premier League football, it's English football. Don't know why I said that, but let's just pretend it's the road to the Premier League, shall we, today? Let's be a bit optimistic. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of the Road to League 2 of Hensford. And, of course, today, it's playoff day. We're getting playing against Stalybridge Celtic FC in the Evo Stick Northern Premier League division. Evo Stick Northern Premier League Premier Division pl promotion playoff semi-final. Blimey, that's a mouthful. Right, how have we got here? We finished fifth in the season and we have been drawn against Staley Bridge FC. Let's have a look at our past dealings against Staley Bridge this season. We played them two times. We haven't lost against them, so that's a good omen. We beat them earlier on in the season 4-2 and then draw through with them on the 10th of March. Hopefully we don't lose today. We've gone back to our original tactic of the 4-4-2 diamond. Um, you know, it was kind of the thing we played throughout the season, so I felt it would be appropriate to go back to that. So we've got Vega, Belinga, Bailey, Oshi, and Llewellyn at the back. Matt Spring, it'll be his last game ever if he if, if we lose this, as well as Vega, because they're retiring at the end of the season. We've got Forley, Fitzpatrick, Lawley, I keep saying Lawley, Laurie, Glover, and Scabhorn. And we've got Billy Jones on the bench, who also plays last game if he plays today, as well as Luke Rogers, who almost also plays last game today. So unfortunately, these players are going to retire. So we need a few more players over the summer to get the squad back into shape. We've got our top goal, goal scorer signed to a new contract. Scabberhorn's now signed a part-time contract with the club worth £8,000 a year, just so it kind of wards him off anywhere um, anywhere else. Right. <sighs> the tunnel. I'm very... Uh, today's the kind of day to show what we're made of. Last time we may well see Belinga, Bailey, Glover, Rogers in a shirt. And... Uh, yeah, I'll wait I'll by here and see how it unfolds. Glover, I don't think will go, but I'm just leaving all their contracts open apart from Scapelhorn because, of course, somebody else wanted him. Um, but I've left all the contracts open just to make sure that, kind of, you know, we want to know what direction we're going, we, whether we can risk spending a bit more money on contracts if we can get up, of course, or, you know, having to get rid of these players because we are um, still in this division. Now, Shoreline are already beating Grant from one minute in, and it's simply a case of waiting and seeing. And this is going to be the most. Well, heart wrenching game, and uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good one, hopefully. So stick around, and you will see something good. Poor pass from Wilkinson, and that goes to Belinga to spring through to Glover. Glover on the ball, passes it to Forley. He just got one yes, one nil up within fifteen minutes, and at the moment we are through to the playoff final. It's not as easy as that though. Our top assist maker and our top goal scorer combine to get the first goal in this tie. Against Stanley It's just a one-legged thing. It's just the one game. Whoever comes out on top of this will win. Simple as. Skebhorn puts us ahead. 15 minutes in. Just another five of those 15 minutes without conceding. And we are through. As I said earlier, Shoreline are leading in their game as well. So simply a case of waiting to see for any more highlights. My heart must be going about 130 beats per minute now. Which is not healthy whatsoever. But this is the most nervy game that I have ever played. Because really the pressure is on to get up to Vanarama North. Because it's been a good season. And we deserve to go up. So, you know, these are the two games where we really prove, as it said before, what we are made of. But they put a ball in. Oh, it's hit the post. Whew. Raw hits the post there. Left bit. I think it was Raw. No, it can't have been. I think it was Wolfenden who hit the post. And that may well be their luck today. Hopefully it is. Hopefully they don't score any goals. That means we don't have to score again, obviously. But you never know. It's not going to happen like that, is it? A brilliant interception from Oshie there. And uh, up to Laurie. To... Glover to Scabhorn, it's, oh, it's nearly 2-0, we've now hit the post, and we are level on terms of hitting the post, and this is just the tights turn out to be a bit scrappy, and a bit crazy, you know, players missing the chance, lovely ball up from Fitzpatrick again to Scabhorn, Scabhorn really showing what he's made of, he's chipped the goalkeeper, and he's got the goal, get it, it's 2-0, he chipped the goalkeeper, he beat the goalkeeper, and it went off the bar, but he got it on the rebound, and Scabhorn has reacted magnificently to that full-time, well, part-time deal, but you know what I mean, and look at that, Skepperhorn runs through, tries to be a bit cheeky, chips the goalkeeper, that works, it goes over the bar, but they make a mistake, the goalkeeper and Honeyball make a mistake, and that forces Skepperhorn, and he's scored again, to make it 2-0, it's not over by any account though, they can easily come back and score 3 in this match, and uh, what a result this would be show so far, and uh, we've worked on team cohesion this week, whether that's paid off or not, I don't know, um, but team cohesion obviously a massive thing coming into these Real pressurous games, you know, someone putting an arm around someone else in case they're a bit nervous or, you know, apprehensive for these sorts of things. Because, of course, a lot of these players are like Sir Skeppelhorn, 
Um, I've never been through this before. I mean, Foley obviously has, and not those sort of players in the likes of Glover, uh, Rogers, but the younger players certainly haven't. But a lovely ball from Laurie, um, but unfortunately it's intercepted. But Wolf and Dunn's on the ball for them. They get intercepted by Oshie. Brilliant stuff. Fitzpatrick puts a ball up. And it's really fast pace in these uh, lower divisions, so you have to kind of keep up. It's a lot of long ball stuff. Um, Volley puts it to Glover, and it's 3 0 Hensford. Oh my lord. This is fantastic. This is brilliant to watch. I can't quite believe what's happening now. Whew. Wow. Fantastic stuff. And Stallybridge clearly have not got the fight. Finishing second in the league was a waste then. And a lovely um, assist from, to from Tom Foley. Glover gets it past the defender. And their goalkeeper, Slynn, had absolutely nothing for that. And uh, it's 3-0 Hensford now. And I can't quite believe this. I, I honestly thought, you know, that we would get battered by Stallybridge. We'd be embarrassed today. But wow. The players have proved me wrong on so many accounts. Of course, this is only the first half, technically speaking, of our playoff chances. If we win this game, we've got to go and beat Shaw Lane or whoever wins that game, because that game's completely open as well. But I think it's fair to say that our game is less open than the other one. Bailey's pretty much injured, so I'll bring Wheatley on for him just to be safe. And we will bring some of our... Um, we won't actually bring some of our um, older players on if it comes to the last 10 minutes, because I've got that game against Shaw Lane... Um, if we do win this. But we're just going to wait and see. Play it by ear. As I said. To give players a farewell if needed. But it'll be lovely to escape, see Skepperhorn get a hat trick. And then we can bring him off. And he can be in full fit condition for that game. For the playoff final. I'm getting ahead of myself here though. This game is still not over Llewellyn. To Laurie. To Skepperhorn. Skepperhorn puts it back to Llewellyn. Lovely ball to Forley. Lovely fluid play. Laurie. To Glover. <sighs> nearly 4-0. Glover nearly gets his second goal of the day. And last time out, he scored for the first time in 30 competitive games. Quite shocking, really. But Spring puts it into Laurie, and it's nearly 4 0. He's hit the post. Really, with the amount of chances we've had, and the amount of shots, 19 shots we've had, absolutely fantastic work from the lads. We could well be 6 0 up. Seriously. Obviously, you guys have watched this. There's no point me trying to convince you because you guys have seen all the highlights. You know, there's nothing we've got to prove here. But we're going to take Alfie Crooks on for uh, what's his face? Joe Fitzpatrick. He's a little bit tired. So we'll bring him on. And then I believe what we will do, we'll bring Billy Jones on late in the game. Um, because it well, may well be his last game. Who knows? We'll bring Billy Jones on. And uh, he's been a really good servant for this year, for us this year. But unfortunately, he's decided to retire at the end of the year. No, you know, we respect that um, at the end of the year. But what a player he's been for us this season. And, uh, he's been a good servant. Llewellyn's coming through as a youngster. But what a servant the old Billy Jones has been. And that's hat-trick for Scabble. One absolutely fantastic stuff. Hugo Scabble gets his hat-trick. Danny Glover suppl supplies the goal, and as it says there, Skebhorn is the real assassin in front of goal. I have to pinch myself to just check this is real. This has been a well, this has been an assassination, if you want to put it in, you know, in a metaphor of Stanley Bridge Celtic. A lovely assist from uh, Glover to Skebhorn, and Skebhorn gets another free goal. Absolutely fan. Fantastic. Just need to make sure I save this before we get to the game, the playoff final. I want to make sure that we actually do this and it's uh, and not a fake thing so our computer goes off or we have a power cut or something like that. Just want to get to the end of this game and make sure we can save this. But, wow. This deserves a like at least. We could get bad in the playoff final, but this at least deserves a like. We are going to be through because not because of course 20 got tw uh, 20, uh, 4 goals in 20 seconds if I get my words right. I certainly won't. So we are going to be through. To the playoff final in the Evo Stick Premier, something we may well not deserve. But I think it is fair to say that in this game, we have certainly outclassed Daly Bridge. And uh, what a fantastic game that was from our strike force. They have no right to be happy, but we have all dreamt of playing in the final. And that's down to our players. The, the morale is exceptional. So can we take that into our game? We get Shaw Lane, I'm pretty sure it will be Shaw Lane. Yes, it will be Shaw Lane. And that game is... Hold on. There's no fixture scheduled. So whenever that game is scheduled, we'll come back for that game. Today really is judgment day. The game against Shaw Lane takes place at Causeway Lane on Matlock on the 11th of June 2018. Can we win this? Can we get up to the Vanarama 6th Division? It would be fantastic. Right. Yeah. Go out there and impress me, folks. Come on, we're going to play counter-attacking football. And even though we don't really want to put pressure on the players... This is the most pressurous game I've ever played in on FM. Wow. Here we go then. We're starting for this. Key highlights are on. That's all good. And here we go. For the start of this game against Shaw Lane. We really need to win this. Um, because really, I don't want to play another uh, another uh, season in the 6th division. I'll, uh, on the 7th division, I'll be honest. That's a brilliant start, you know. Springs just shoved a Shaw Lane player on his final game for us. And it may well leave a mark. Their number 8 is going to step up. Can we do anything about it? No, 
One nil down against Shoreline already. Marvellous stuff. Brrr. Oh, that's so annoying. I don't know what that noise was. Brrr. There we go. Well, whatever. But we're losing in this game. I'm losing my marbles, to be quite honest, because, well, 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 well. Nothing's happening at the moment. We haven't had a, we haven't had a shot. We only had the yellow card, but we've had most possession. How odds that Holt puts it in for them, and it's nearly well two 0 That's frightening. Belinga puts it out. Will he put it out? No, he's not. Right, he puts it out finally for Skephorn. That needs rectifying. Um, pump it into the box. More direct passing. Uh, look for the overlap and normal defence. We really want to make sure we win this at the end of the day. We need to be more disciplined though at the same time. But ensure that we push forward. I've just got nothing to say. As, as for the last game, really. It, it's just one of them that... It's that pressurous that you can't really fill it with small talk. It's one of them that we've, we've got to win. It's a must win. You know, it's not like other games that, you know, we can kind of brush off and there's other chances. This is one chance, the one and only chance to get up to the Vanarama uh, National League South, I believe it will be. Forley to Fitzpatrick, to Laurie, to Skebhorn, to Llewellyn on the wing. To Forley. Back to Spring. Oh, that stupid pass. To there, Gillum. To Isaac. To Meadows. Lovely thing from Forley. Lovely stuff. It's Patrick. To Glover. Put it in the box, son. To Forley. To Laurie. 1-1. One, one. Get in there. Lovely stuff from the players. It took a while to build up the play. That doesn't really matter. We're going to make sure we're not disciplined. Because it feels like that's um, restricting us from playing... Those long passes, but shocking by Forley that initial pass was. Brilliant, brilliant um, last pass that meant that we scored the goal. And it's now 1 1, 24 minutes in, in front of the Shoreline Faithful. Well, they've obviously got the support of their home fans. We, from sure, brought a few fans along as well for the ride. But it's a real shame this isn't played at Keys Park. That's just the way the season system works, unfortunately. Um, and because they finished higher up in the league, it meant that the um, playoff final is going to be played at their stadium. Right, Glover's on the ball now. Up to Skephorn, doesn't quite reach in there. Whitehouse does the same for Bell on their team. Oh, you just get the ball back for God's sake. It's into Gillum, lovely stuff. And they go back. Get it out, get it out. Just leave, get it out of up their box. It's all that matters. As long as it's not in their box, they shouldn't. Well, as long as it's not in our box, technically um, speaking, then they won't score. But they will. Because it's just across the belt. But Vega saves it. Nice, nice, nice stuff. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, whatever. Just repeat myself three times. Now, Glover. Loses out to White. Llewellyn's on the ball, though, on the left wing. Brilliant stuff from Llewellyn this season. A brilliant free size, and they'll definitely carry on from Billy Jones after he's retired. As he really already has done, to be honest. But Fitzpatrick's in the box, and he has a shot, and we're ahead. Was not expecting that whatsoever. Fitzpatrick has the shot, and we're now ahead against Shoreline. we just got to make sure now, though, that we shut up shop for the next 60 minutes. Which might well be harder than it seems, I think it's fair to say. But Spring passes it. To Fitzpatrick, and he gets past the defender, and a lovely shot, and that nicely goes past Hurst in the shoreline goal. <sighs> My heart is beating that fast, it's unbelievable. Thank God I get rewarded for some bacon sandwich at lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, I'm having some bacon and sausage at lunchtime if you're really interested, but uh, lunchtime feels like it never come. Laurie to Forley. Forley. It's a Fitzpatrick. It's free. One now. Fantastic stuff. And Fitzpatrick finds the net again. Thank God we brought him back. Whoa. It's snowing just a bit out there at the moment. Can we get... Oh, I'm just going di to divert from this game. Can everyone see the snow out there? Or not. I don't know if you can, to be fair. But there we go. Let's put the webcam. Hopefully, it will nicely go back into place. Yes, it will. The lighting will auto-correct itself. Which missed the highlight for Fitzpatrick's goal. I'm sure you watched that instead of my fancy webcam showing you some rubbish camera version of the lovely snow. But there we go. But they've got a long ball up. This is really good so far because they've got a nice cushion of goals now. But that does not mean to say that it's over whatsoever. If we can get four up there, the man, the man, the man, the man, the that might be another story. But Skeppel was in the box. But um, it went straight past Hurst. And as well as their goal. If this could be the score at half time, it'd be absolutely fantastic. But Bell for them to Whitehouse. To Isaac. To Whitehouse again. Nice 1 2 play from them. To White. To Bell. To Gillum. Oh, it's 2 it's 3 2. I was going to say 2 3, but it's 3 2 up to us. And we've only got that one goal cushion now. This is really close. Five goals in this first half. Fantastic game, really, for the neutrals. Oh, do not be 3 3. Holt puts it in. Very nearly 3 3. The post just denying them. Can we get a counter attack now? Glover running across the wing. Just keep running. Keep running. It really doesn't matter. Keep running. Put it in the box now to Laurie. 
unfortunately they've got it out. They knew what we were doing, and there was two defenders in there to cover uh, Laurie and Scaphorn's run up the pitch. And that's going to be half time. We're up at half time, three two, but a lot could happen in this next half. And um, don't be complacent. I think it's fair to say. Okay, Foley was confused and demotivated, but the rest of the players were quite happy with that. But I think it's fair to say, you know, we shouldn't get complacent because we're winning. We still need to play at our top notch. You know, the level that we played against Stalybridge, Bridge, that was the sort of level I'm looking for against Shoreline here. Pretty much 40 minutes to go, just after 40 minutes to go, and we are still winning here. I've just, I've practically, you know, shoved my nail off during this episode because I've been so nervous, but I'm sure that'll rebuild. I'm not exactly tearing my hair out just yet. Because we are still ahead against Shoreline here. But it will be time to make our first substitution in a minute. So we'll bring Billy Jones on for his farewell game. I think it's fair to say. You know, he been a really good servant. And Llewellyn will be back next season, I'm fairly sure. Apart from that, though, we're going to keep it as it is for the moment. Because it's, well, they're all seem to be playing decently well. Just a bit of cover at the back would be much appreciated. Right, 25 minutes in. Nothing's happened in this second half. That's good for us. I'm quite happy with that. But they've brought another strike in there. Now playing a 4-3. 3 from what I've just guessed. Because they've just brought the left back off. So they're playing a lot more attacking. And, oh, for goodness sake, we just conceded a second penalty. Oshie's conceded it this time, and it could well be 3-3. Free free. And it's Oshie's 10th yellow card of the season. And this may well be 3-3 free free now. Jesus Christ. Is it Meadows? Is it something like that? Yep, yeah, he is. He steps up, and we concede another goal. It's all level now, and it's 3-3. Free free. <sighs> wow, it's 3-3. Free free. Meadows... Steps up, you're just going to struggle to save a penalty. But we've conceded too many penalties at the end of the day. Um, I think we've got to make sure that we stay on our feet now. Don't be too stupid, but stay more disciplined now. And uh, we're going to make another sub. We're going to bring Skepperhorn off for Jarvis. He's a bit tired um, and bring him on as a target man. And we'll leave it like that for the moment because we want to make sure that uh, if anyone gets injured, there are sufficient replacements to them and we, have, we aren't damaged with 10 men. But we are going to make another substitution comes to the 80th minute. We're going to bring Oshie off for Wheatley because at the end of the day, Oshie... Has conceded two penalties, I believe, and that just simply is not good enough at all. Right, you can go support, and then we're just going to have to make sure that these all go support now, because we have got a, a, a good result. Fick it to oh god. Okay, another highlight. Fitz Patrick to Laurie. To Foley. To Glover. To Jarvis! Yes, we're 4 3 up. This is the sort of game that you could not write scripts for. It's been that up and down, up and down. But this could well just be the goal that seals it for us. Bailey to Fitzpatrick. To Laurie. To Foley. To Glover. I was going to say to G. To Jarvis. And that was not a, a, a shot that they would save. And Jarvis really coming to his element, like I said, against Stally Bridge, I think. But we made enough substitution with our uh, centre-back. I don't want to say the P word yet. Because we are so far away from it, potentially. But, oh, come on. Five minutes added time. Can we get it? Three. Two. Come on, this has got to be it now. There's a minute left. There's a minute left. We've still got possession. Billy Jones. Waste time, lads. Fitzpatrick to Laurie. Uh oh, we've lost the ball to Holt. Right, come on, lads. Get it back. Surely they cannot get a goal now. As long as we keep possession, that's all good. Lafourley. To Jarvis. Get the ball, son. No, maybe not. Right, they've got a goal kick. That's good. I'm happy with that. Let's have a countdown. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. We're up. We've done it. The team all against the odds. We should have got mid-table this season. Okay, Shoreline maybe against the odds as well. But Shoreline against the odds got to the final. We got to the final against the odds as well. And apparently they predicted a win for Shoreline today. But what a brilliant game that was from us. We're promoted now to the Vanarama South League in the 6th Division of English Football. A lot more financial backing. We might well be playing professional football next year. And that is fantastic. We technically win the trophy, even though it's not really a trophy. But absolutely fantastic stuff. And what a season this is. We'll have a quick um, look at the how the season's gone. But that was a fantastic game. And I'm, I'm just overjoyed. My, my emotions may not be coming out so much at the moment. But honestly... Whew, I, I can't breathe. This is brilliant. And there we go. We've won. We're up. And that's absolutely fantastic. The initial budget. And there we go. The wage budget's increased. As well as the transfer budget. We've led Hensford Town's promotion. Let's have a read of this. Hensford Town fans are in a jubilant mood. After Toby Jones led them to the incredible feat of promotion. From the Evo Stick Northern Premier League Premier Division. A fan spoke person announced that Jones is undoubtedly one of the best managers around. 
and are desperately hoping that he stays with the club for years to come. In the wake of our promotion from the Stick League, club favourite Chris Brindley has heaped praise above to upon manager Toby Jones pulling off such an outstanding achievement. And uh, Jones has established his credentials in a promotion few thought possible as one of the very best managers in the game and was fully deserving of the adulation being sent his way. Hentford Town have been promoted to the Van Arm National League, North or South, and they've been delighted at our unexpected promotion, and that is fantastic. Well done, folks. And uh, well done, folks. Well, well done to the players. It's all about the players, and that is absolutely fantastic. We are all up, then. We are up against the odds. There's the final league table. Ourselves and Altrincham get promoted. That's absolutely fantastic. Let's have a quick review of the squad for this season, shall we? In terms of apps, the most apps gone to Vega. He's going to retire, unfortunately. But Forley, uh, Forley, Laurie and Bailey, that's a bit of a tough one to get out. Uh, they all make the top appearances. Spring, Balinga, Oshie, Scavenhall, they all feature in there. Um, but really, it's all about Glover, um, Up and Fitzpatrick, of course, because he, he doesn't really care. But average rating-wise... Tom Forley and Fitzpatrick were top goal scorer, Scabberhorn. Top assists, Forley and very nearly Scabberhorn. And can we get an average goals per minute sort of thing going on here as well? Um, goals per 90 minutes, I guess? Ah, apparently for, um, Jarvis is... Yes, that would make sense. Right, Jarvis in 12 apps has got 6 goals. And Fawcett in five ups got five goals. That doesn't really make sense, but oh well. He scored technically a goal a game, but Skeppelhorn very close to that, you know, nearly a goal a game. And what a season that's been. Fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed the ride of this first season. I certainly have, and that has been fantastic news being promoted to the Van Rama National League save. I can breathe now. I can get a nice cup of tea in my Liverpool Cup. And I can have some bacon and sausage sandwiches. That's all that matters now. If you have enjoyed this uh, series so far and this episode, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I'll see you tomorrow for our first Vanarama National League safe game. I have to pinch myself. Make sure this is happening and it's not a dream. Thank you so much for watching, folks. I've been TIJ and I'll see you guys tomorrow at 6pm. Goodbye.